Okay, so we are about to begin our JDM adventure. We are in Japan, we're in an Evo 10 uh, that um, Steve has kindly lent to us. This was just uh, picked up from the auction a week ago and of course cost about a third of what it would cost in Australia. But for us to have a truly authentic JDM experience, we need to buy our own car. So we're, well this thing wails, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Uh, we need to buy our own car, so we are on our way to Car Shop Zenith, uh, which is a second-hand car shop in Asaikawa in Hokkaido, uh, and we're going to go and buy a car, which is going to be incredible. Um, and then, um, and then we have some very, very exciting things uh, planned once we pick up the car. So the job now, ten minutes further down the road, we'll go and see Mr. Uh, Mr. Sato at Car Shop Zenith. We're going to buy a car. So in 2010, we shot our first feature film in Japan, which was Turbos and Temples. And ever since then, something that heaps of fans of Mighty Car Mods and something we wanted to do is go back and shoot another film. So we got to planning in uh, around mid-2013 uh, and decided to go back and do another film. One of the things that may not come across in the film is just how quickly this was shot. We picked up the mirror at around 11 o'clock on Saturday morning and we finished filming everything at two o'clock on Sunday afternoon. So this whole film was done in literally just a little over 24 hours. And in that time we had to pick up the car, buy the car, go and meet the 88s, modify it, and then go to the drift track. Now normally, if you're doing that without filming, that would be a challenge, but creating a whole story around it as well, and all the production, particularly the new technology that we're using this time as well, it was a very, very challenging thing to try and get done. Unfortunately, like so many used cars that we buy, the battery doesn't work. Uh, so we've got a battery rescue jump starter. Now, I'm all very confident about using one of these normally, except every bit of running is in Japanese. So I know that that says power, but I don't know what any of them say. So we're just going to like put it on and hope that nothing explodes. But it's mad. It's a little lithium it's battery. It's so small, isn't it, Martin? Like you super actually, efficient. Like, keep it in your glove box and start your crap car. You should do that, Martin. I'm you can gonna. take your own advice. I'm going to. Look at this piece of rubbish. So that's our mad little mirror that it's currently being filmed. I completely love it because it's so awesome and small and turbo and just, just cheap and crap. Basically cheap and crap, which is awesome because you can drive around and not worry about smashing it. Check it out. So good. Love it. There you go. Rolling start Evo verse. Oh wow. Oh, okay. Nothing. I need to be fair, I only revved it like a third of the way. Because I'm sure it makes heaps more power. This would actually be awesome half cut material. Seriously awesome half cut material. Everything from the front's fine. There's a little bit of rust in the back. It's relatively clean up here. You could use the door trims, the power windows. You could you get the seats and everything sent over. It'd be awesome. Of course, you got the motor, which is the most important bit because it's a turbo charger. There was tropical storms, there were earthquakes while we were there. We probably had the worst conditions to shoot in that we've ever had in the whole time we've been creating Mighty Car Mods. So we're about to head out filming today, but it is freezing in Japan. Uh, there's been some earthquakes, typhoons, tropical storms, uh, and really cold. So these are really cool. You basically rip them out, shake it, and then put it in your pocket, and it heats up for 16 hours to keep you warm. Um, very, very cool. Well, very warm in fact and we're going to need these today because we're going to be out on a drift track for the whole day. There were a few times throughout the trip that we started thinking to ourselves I don't know if we're actually going to get this done but we had no choice because we're in Japan, we had the car, we'd already modified it, we just had to get it done. And what was amazing is when we got to the drift track we just had a moment where the sky stayed completely grey but the sun came out and the track was wet and that was perfect conditions for our mirror. So we had something slippery to slide on but we could have cameras outside and have these epic grey skies and it was just absolutely perfect. And there was one particular moment that made it into the film where Marty and I driving along the straight and I kind of look up and I see it, see this rainbow, a double rainbow, and I kind of realise we are in Japan on a drift track, drifting under a double rainbow, and it was just one of the most epic automotive experiences I've ever had. So a couple of reasons that I love the mirror so much was firstly it was 
already literally destined for the scrap heap, which is great because what we were going to do with that car, I wouldn't have wanted to do something really nice and really expensive. It was completely inappropriate to go drifting with, and me and Moo driving it are completely inappropriate drifters. Um, so it was really cool to actually be able to take that to the track, and we got really lucky with the weather that we had there that meant we would actually slide. So you can't get these mirrors in Australia in that trim. You can get the really crappy versions, but you cannot get all-wheel drive and turbo and all the good gear inside it. So it made it pretty exciting to be able to pick up something like that for the kind of money that we paid. And it, you know, we didn't actually know at the time. We thought, you know, it, it might have enough power that it is actually fun to drive. And it proved to be. Like as soon as we drove it out of the dealership and hit boost, we're like, this is actually going to be fun. Maybe we're not going to be hanging sideways the same as some all-out drift car, but we knew that if we took it to a track where there's no gutters, there's no one to hit, it's a racetrack, we knew we'd have heaps of fun. Whoa, oh, we got a wipeout. Slow down, dude. Slow down. Oh, shit. On the inside, dude. I think a lot of the time when people are building cars or doing music or making art or doing whatever, they put a lot of criteria on themselves and there's heaps of pressure to make sure it's this perfect thing. And a lot of the time, if people can't tick all those boxes, they just won't do it at all. It's like, if I can't record in the best studio with the best people, I'm just not gonna make an album. If I can't get this car with these mods, I'm not gonna worry about making a car. And Mighty Car Mods has never been about that. We may not make the best cars, the fastest cars, the best looking cars, but it's about just doing what you can with the stuff that you have. And I think Key to the City was a real kind of the epitome of that philosophy because uh, a little mirror is like the worst choice for a drift car. Marty and I are the worst choice for drift drivers. Uh, but still, this experience happened, this film happened, and it wouldn't have happened if we'd just gone, you know what? It's like, this is not the way that things are meant to be. We are deviating from the recipe book. When we drove up to the 88's garage, I was immediately super excited. I could just tell from all the different workshops and garages I've been to that this was the real deal. This is some guys that just loved modifying cars. It wasn't all super shiny and glitzy and new everything tools. It was just use what you can to get the job done. And I kind of love that because that's what Mighty Mods has always been about. So when we when we rocked up and there's just all these cars sitting around and all these guys in there and they're all smiling, they're happy, they're excited to work on a little car and they had a really good laugh at our car as well because they thought it was hilarious. Cambered, uh, custom exhaust, some stickers. Great. And then when we're finished, it'll look like this. <laughs> we started talking to the guys, you know, trying to figure out all the different names for screwdrivers and there's a part in the film where we're trying to figure out what a hammer is and they're like, it's a hammer. How do you say hammer in Japanese? Hammer. 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 Oh, it's the same. <laughs> Uh, how do you say hammer, please, though? Hammer, please. No. Hammer, hammer, please. Please. Hammer, 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 we're working on cars, it's like you get the tools you need, you do it with the time and everything, the materials that you have, and you have a great time. And it was so fun to be working on a car with guys from a totally different part of the world on this little key car. The amazing thing was, and we, we kind of made this point a couple of times in the film, at one point we saw this wing that's just screwed onto the back of a car, just straight through the boot, and we kind of looked at him and said, can you like explain this style to us? And there's this completely blank, like this isn't some kind of like, Bauhaus, everything exposed design thing. They literally just go, oh, I had to put it on, so I screwed it in. Whereas in Australia, that's kind of really making a statement. But to them, it's literally just, oh, I needed a shelf, so I just banged a shelf on it. Because we have the owner of the car here, can you tell us a little bit about your process of just sticking this on like this, totally visible? Tell me why you do that. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's an easy place to stick on. And so it was just a bit more exposure for us because our idea of what JDM was, again, was kind of extended by actually being there, which is why I think it's important that anybody who's really into that scene needs to go there and see it firsthand. 
You know, it's interesting in terms of like going for the look that certainly in Australia, some people would look at this and think that this is cooler than doing it the proper way, which I think is really interesting. I'm wondering what he thinks about that. <laughs> yeah, he, he was really just simply thinking of it. it was the easiest place to stick it on. It comes back to that point we made before about, you know, you can have a project or an artwork just sitting there waiting to be used because you're waiting for just the right part or to spend the right just conditions. the right money, yeah. the right conditions. These guys are like, I'm going drifting tomorrow and I want a bigger turbo and I don't have a dump pipe, so he just made one. And so I really awesome. respect that. That's great, isn't it? So the rad thing at the moment apparently in Japan is fluoro front mount. So as you can see this one here is just a rattle job. Um, but again, super practical. Now if this engine bay looks familiar to you, then you truly are an amazingly awesome Mighty Car Mods fan because this car was featured in our feature film Turbos and Temples back in 2010. And what makes it extra cool is all of that time it's been rolling with an original Mighty Car Mods sticker that is still going strong. That is one of the original lot, like the first 50 stickers that we got done and here it is still <laughs> look at this man it's just it's just how they do it in japan get the job done we've done mighty car mods meets all over the world uh some in english speaking countries some in non-english speaking countries and japan's a really good example of that second one it was so amazing to see so many people show up who don't necessarily speak english as a first language but just have that that love of cars as we do <laughs> How are you? Oh, yeah. Oh! And uh, Australia, do you think do? What do you do? Yeah, farming. I want to farming. Farming? Yeah. What kind of farming? Oh, so rice farming. Oh, rice farming. Uh, it was really challenging shooting conditions. It was raining. It was raining quite heavily. Um, there was two of us shooting and it was completely pitch black. So we got there, we pulled out a camera and turned it on and there's just a black screen because there's nothing. And so we started talking to some of the guys and like they were all cool with it. And we figured out um, that if we parked them opposite each other and put everyone's headlights on, we got this really, really awesome scene. So you can see in the film there's these shots of, you know, all these cars and all these crazy mods uh, all lit up from, from everybody's headlights. It looked really good. There was a whole range of cars Everyone was very friendly, but the thing that totally blew our minds the most is they still have a massive Fast and the Furious style thing going on over there. We're talking vinyl, flames, boots full of subs, 10 screens in the cars, scissor doors on a Forester. Like they, they are still hardcore into that whole scene, which is crazy because I haven't seen stuff like that in Australia for a decade probably, you know. Um, but in Japan, that stuff is still seriously going strong. When the meet finished, we, um, we grabbed our cameras, we went over to where the exit was because we thought it'd be great to get some shots of all the different cars that were there. And we're kind of thinking, it's Japan, it's wet, it's an empty road, there's a very good chance there'd be some sideways action. It was the most sedate exit to any meet I've ever seen in my entire life. When we shot this film, we really wanted to step it up a bit as far as production value. Uh, we had a few limitations, which we didn't have much time. The weather was completely rubbish. And, uh, and we really wanted to just make it look better than anything we've done before. So we're experimenting with a few different types of cameras, you know, doing some aerial videography as well, which worked really well at the drift track. So we're loading up and backing up all our footage from today. Um, we've got a whole bunch of GoPros and things. It's a real challenge today because it's wet as, and it's on a muddy drift circuit, so everything's getting covered in mud. Um, and rained on, but so far we've had an awesome morning. We've got a little bit more to do this afternoon, and right now we have to feed ourselves and feed some batteries. Yeah, so we're getting some lunch at, they call these things a 7-Eleven, but it's like some other kind of super mart thing. 7-Eleven's mm. um, got the primo food though, really, as far as, you know, takeaway kind of convenience store food goes. Yeah, right. Continuing the snacks, have a look in here, Mum. Yeah. So this is some ice creams we've got. I don't know what the hell that is. I didn't buy that. I don't know what that thing is. I don't know what all this stuff is. It doesn't look like tofu to me. What's that? That's a black donut. Uh, some crunky, which is delicious. Some more chocolate. Some almond chocolate. A Snickers. Some Nivea cream for Marty's feet. A rice ball. Some apples. Again, the apples here are gargantuan, aren't they? Mm. Like the size of Voltron. 
Um, there's a popper, and that's just one of the bags. Oh, we got some Thousand Lemons, I already ate that. Drank it even. Some Oreos. Um, some Inari, which is delicious Inari. Hey, dude. Um, <laughs> these guys are laughing at you because of how much food we're munching. I'm really hungry. And then, a sandwich. The fact it was raining, cameras and water just generally do not mix. Uh, so that presented a bit of a challenge. And also the fact that we're not only shooting it, we're also on screen. So it's not like you've got a crew that can chase, chase after you and get every single moment. So we have to just kind of be very clear about what it is we're going to shoot and where we go and making sure that batteries are charged. I started making the music for the film about 12 months before we actually went to Japan and started shooting. I knew that the music was going to play a massive part in the film and so I didn't want that to be something rushed so I started that really early. I also used a lot of different singers this time because I really wanted it to feel like a soundtrack album and the, um, the album that I did for Turbos and Temples, it kind of it did feel like one artist because it was just one artist but with this I wanted there to be lots of different flavours and so there was different singers this time. We had um, Simone, we had Erin kind of doing the female stuff but then we also had Nat who does the awesome end track, remember, um, and also Mark Augustine. Um, who was doing all the rapping stuff on Amnesia. And I really wanted to try and kind of mix it up a little bit. Also, even though the track is kind of in this electronic category, there was lots more organic instruments recorded. So um, I played real drums on it, real bass, real guitar. All right, let's run this thing. So this is the very last track that I wrote for the soundtrack and is the closing track of the movie. Uh, it's built around a sample of my voice, which is just this. Uh, the sun. Uh, uh, and then it does this little riff that goes. Um, and, um, and that's what went over the closing credits of the movie. singer absolutely smashed it. So awesome. And then Aaron. out I got this um, message from Marty um, and he said hey dude check out the charts and I had a look uh, and the key to the city soundtrack was sitting at number 93 on the charts uh, just in front of Ricky Martin and I was like what well, to even be in the top 100 was amazing on something that is a soundtrack to a film that was on YouTube um, and um, and around 24 hours later um, I reloaded it and saw that it had moved up to number six on the charts and I just couldn't believe that I was in literally the top 10 electronic albums and so I, um, I mentioned to Nat, one of the singers, um, and he just kind of reloaded his phone and I had this moment they'll never forget. He turns around and he goes, hey bro, and pointed his phone and it just said, key to the city, number one. And the album had gone to number one in Australia, number one in Canada, it was in the top 10. 
uh, in America, UK, Ireland, Austria, New Zealand, all over the world, the album was just going crazy, which was so incredible for me, you know, because the music was something that was literally just meant to be music that was to support the film. And um, within a couple of days later, um, it moved over into the mainstream charts um, and then uh, moved over onto the ARIA charts after that. And, um, and currently that's where it's sitting. I think I'm just behind um, One Direction at the moment. So if anybody was thinking about buying like a song, right now is the time to do it because One Direction need to be chopped. When we finished the film, we'd finished the post-production, Moog had finished the music. It was around three days before the scheduled release date that we'd put up. When we did all that and we put it to upload, it came up and said four days remaining and we thought we're completely screwed, like we, ca we cannot get this out in time. So we thought we have to find better internet and so we thought if anybody knows internet that's probably going to be Google. So we made some phone calls and they said yes, just this once you can bring it in and you can use our system to upload it. So we went in there, we got the drive, we got the film in there, it started to upload and luckily we got it out in time. It was really awesome for us after such a huge amount of work to get the film out. Um, after the first week that it had been up, it had been viewed over half a million times. It appeared in media and stuff all over the world, different blogs and websites. And to also have the music um, go to number one in Australia and top ten all over the world was just so amazing. And of course that was all thanks to the Mighty Car Mods people around the world who blogged about it and wrote about it and shared it. And um, it was just amazing to be able to make something and then have people really respond to it. And it's just, it's really fired us up to make sure we do more and do it better every time. It was great to take the production value to the next level. It was awesome to have the experience with that little car, which is now Scrappu, which makes me very sad. Yeah, um, it's, it's a sad though, isn't it, really, that the, the little car would have to get completely crushed, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, Seems we like knew a that, waste, doesn't it? We knew it? When, we got, when you got there that the car would not... I mean, it was to be used for a purpose. It had a warrior's death, like the blue turd got crushed and stuff, so... Yeah, but not every, not every story has to finish with such melodramatic sadness, does it? I mean, it doesn't have to finish with the car being destroyed, you know, does it really? Yeah, but ours got put on a truck and... and... Well, it did get put on a truck. It did. But, Martin, imagine if instead this is how the story ended. Two mates go to Japan, make a film. Yeah. One of them doesn't really care much for the car, but his mate loves the car. After a couple of days in Japan, his mate goes into the toilet. Meanwhile, the other dude, who didn't really like the car that much, rang the truck driver and goes, dude, divert that car from the scrap heap. Yeah. And at the same time, the other dude, who by now you must be thinking is a pretty awesome dude, then also called Import Monster and organised an import clearance to Australia and a shipping container and then brought the car back to Australia. Imagine what? if that is how the story ended. Can you imagine? Dude. Can you imagine what? Are you being serious? Dude, that little mirror right now is in Melbourne in a shipping container ready to be picked up. Yes, it's been chopped. It's the only way I could legally get it in here. But dude. Out. No. Dude. That drift mirror no, from forget Japan. Forget this for a second. Our, our, our drift it's mirror. It's in Australia right now. What? It is here. It is here, ready to be picked up <laughs> yes, and continue its life. You know, I'm serious. It is here. It is in Melbourne. I got that email yesterday. It is here. That mirror is in Australia. I got goosebumps, man. It's here. We are going to what? put it back together right here in Australia. And, gonna, and, and do we take it drifting? You know what we're doing with it. That's right. It's here. So it lives on. It will live on forever as a Mighty Car Mods car from Japan to Australia. Uh, but once we get that sorted, obviously we'll share it with these guys. Um, so Dude, it's here, Martin. I can't, I can't even no talk scrapper. anymore. No, no scrapper. I can't even talk anymore. You're welcome. I'm so excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna You're welcome. He loves those shitty cars. <laughs>